What is good guys, welcome back to the UCC channel. I am Checkmate, coach of Queen of Simeon, and I'm your host for today's post-commentary battle review of my Season 10 Week 6 rematch and team builder against Alan, coach of the Slow Bros. So far this season we are 3 and 2, snagging a win last week over Vauta, which was uh, uh, looking a little bit hairy at times, so we managed to uh, sneak a win away out of it. And we actually have some unfinished business with Alan from Week 1. Uh, so we're looking to get our revenge, and uh, this is the team we have prepared so far. So, covering our roster, which you can see to the right, we have the tier one of, or tier one mega of Mega Old Carrier, a tier one of Magiana, tier two of Celebi, Mamoswine, and Mandabuzz, tier threes of Menial, Valion, and Parisian, tier fours of a second. Tier 3s of Menial, Cavalion, and Tentacruel. Tier 4s of Verizion, Moltres, and Heavy Palmer. Tier 5 of Miltank. So, Alan this week. As you've already seen his team once, it hasn't changed. He has a Tier 1 Mega of Pinsa, and he has his Tier 1s. Uh, I think he only has one, which is the Tapu Coco. He has Tier 2s of the Holucha, Bishar, and the Zygarde 50%. He has Tier 3s of Nidoqueen. He has Sloking, and he has the Porygon Z. I said Porygon Z is a tier 2 as well, actually. Tier 3, tier 4. Emble might be a tier. You know what? I can't remember about Emble. Oh, this is a mess. <laughs> uh, tier 3. <laughs> Need a Queen and uh, Sloking. Um, plus or minus Emble, because I can't remember. Tier 4 of the Serena, and tier 5 of the Vanalux. Uh, that was completely butchered, but I'm gonna roll with it, you know. It, <laughs> if you want a completely incomprehensive team out overview, go check out the Battle One of the UCC by me, and uh, yeah, that will have the right set on there because this was all over the place. But you know what? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, so it's lots of different. Uh, Threats on Alan's team from the uh, potential surge there from the Raichu to set up for the Dragon Dances from the Zygarde. The fact that our team last time was super weak to Bishop, so that could be a threat. We don't have a switch into Nida Queen. We don't have a switch into Tapu Koko. We don't have a switch into Mega Pinsir. And there's also the potential for the whole Lucha to come in at the end of the sweep. Or there's potential for Z conversion on the Porygon Z. So. Yeah, there's plenty of things to be getting on with. That's for sure. So, <laughs> we've decided to bring Ambipom. Um, I'm not sure why we did. It outspeeds a lot of his team. I think it's designed to outspeed the base 100s. Um, that's designed to outspeed make a pincer, I think. Probably is. If it's not, then I've done it wrong. I'm pretty sure that's designed to actually make a pin through 105. But it doesn't look right, I have to be honest. Maybe it's a speed creeping mega pin, so. I don't know. Alright, <laughs> this is all over the place. Um, anyway, we decided to bring a naive nature with a life orb, uh, running fake out, ice punch, power up punch, and hidden power rock. So I'm not really, I've, Alan's been telling us a lot how he doesn't like Zygarde, but I'm not prepared to risk him not bringing it in order to have a better move on there. Uh, so you've got the Ice Punch, also hits the Sarina. It does hit the Mega Pinsir, although as you can see we have Hidden Power Rock, which is our nice tech to get rid of his Mega Pinsir this time. When you see an Amp Bomb you think, yeah it's going to have Ice Punch, it's not going to be able to one shot us, there's no point quick attacking, We have maybe we Sword Stance. Maybe we go for straight for a frustration or return. Facade. I don't know. We can catch it with a hit power up, which would be awesome. Because um, it one shots, which I would really like to do. That is a, a life goal. So, um, yeah, power up punch is mainly there for the Bishop because I don't want it to be able to set up on us. Uh, Gil also gives us a free plus one. It's not really going to help us all that much because ice punch and power up punch is not good coverage. Uh, fake out's there to get damage on Coco because Coco's a problem. Uh, we don't have anything that outspeeds it and we do need to get damage on it. Uh, it does, I don't know, 50% I reckon. 
uh, with the life orb technician fake out. So we only need a couple of those, and I reckon on the net following one it end up switching out. I don't think it wants to take that twice. So I reckon Ambipom can put in a little bit of work. It's I feel like this set is incredibly niche, and unless he brings a team where it's going to shine, it's really going to do absolutely nothing. So it may end up just being uh, fodder, which is unfortunate, but I reckon that might well be the case. We shall see. Um, we're going to leave Mini on for a second, we'll come back to it. Alright, next up we have the Mamo Swine, which is Brandy of Z this week. Last time we were unfortunate. Just before the turn we claimed a kill with Mamo Swine, he burnt us with a Scold. In fact, he had a 100% burn rate with the Scold. Um, and Mamo Swine unfortunately did not pick off the kill with it as an Assault Fest variant on the Sloking, which is the thing we're looking for. So, we are running the Grand EMZ, so we are guaranteed to knock out on the second turn after he takes an Earthquake. We got the Ice Shard No Score Crash for Ice Support, because this team doesn't like Ice Plus Ground. And then lastly we have the Stealth Rock, just as it's kind of a filler move. Uh, we don't need anything else, we don't actually have another Stealth Rock on the team. Aside from Minior, but that's not really a very great Stealth Rock. Though. So, we have Adamant Max Attack, 252 Speed, which I think outspeeds the Embor, uh, maybe the Bishop. Um, so yeah, uh, it's going to put in plenty of work once again, I hope. Well, well, I hope it will put in work this time, as it kind of didn't have an opportunity last time, unfortunately. Uh, moving on, we actually are bringing Mandibuzz to a team, or to a game where he has Coco and Raichu, which might be mad, might not. I think we did it last time. It's the same as last time, it's the only switch into Mega Pinsir. We have Foul Play, Hidden Power Fighting, Roost, and Taunt. Where to start? Uh, I guess we'll start with Foul Play. Foul Play does a lot of damage to his whole team. It does like 30% I reckon to the uh, Sloking, which is really solid damage because we don't have a lot of ways of damaging that thing. And then a lot of his team is actually physically offensive, such as the Mega Pinsir, the Horlucha, the Embor, of course, the Zygarde. Uh, probably Tapu Koko, uh, seeing as it was last time as well. And obviously the Sirena as well. Uh, with things weak to it, like the Sloking and the uh, Alolan Raichu, it, it's going to do a lot of damage to a lot of his team, which is really good. I am incredibly paranoid about the Bishop, and this set cannot touch it without the Hidden Power fighting. I did look at potentially running Rock Smash, I don't recall if it gets it. Uh, but I believe Hidden Power Fighting actually does more damage. Uh, we do have the option for Heat Wave, but similarly, Hidden Power Fighting just does more damage. Yeah, we do get the Rock, uh, rock Smash, but hidden power, fire is, uh, hidden power Fighting is just a better option. So we've got the Taunt, which is there to stop the recovery on the Slow King, potentially. Stop setting up hazards with the Nido King. Uh, although I'm expect fully expecting the offensive this time. Uh, it wasn't last time, and it got destroyed by something. Oh no, I got flinched to death by, <laughs> by my mammoth line, that's what happened after he burnt me. Um, <laughs> so I'm expecting it to be offensive this time. Um, but it does mean we can taunt that as well. It also taunts the Zygarde and stops that thing setting up substitutes or foils or dragon mounts, which could be a potential threat to us, or even stops it recovering as well with the rest or something like that. And the Rooster obviously have a bit of recovery. They got the Rocky Helmet. Uh, gets a little bit of chip off and things like the Horlux, the Mega Pinsir, the Emboard, the Tapu Coco, even the Bishop. So that's going to give us plenty of options to just wear things down a little bit. Big Peck stops our defense getting lowered. We don't have any need to run either the Weak Armor or the Overcoat. It seems kind of irrelevant. So as well stop and get his defense drop with whatever he may have. So yeah, fairly simple roll once again. Take hits, get chip. Let's see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a free switch into Tapu Koko every single time. Um, his foul play only does about 25%, I think. Um, but after we get fake out damage, that's going to be racking up really quickly, especially if he's light orb or he's running wild charge, it's going to really wear him down sharpish. 
Continuing on, we have our Wakan Berry Tentacruel, which is running Scorch, Sludge Bomb, Rebel Spin, and Toxic Spikes. Uh, we've got a lot of defense investment with a bit of special attack investment. And this is designed to, if he goes into his Tepicoco on it, uh, we're guaranteed to live any wild charge he wants to go for. And after the wild charge recoil, uh, 64 investment into the special attack with the Sludge Bomb actually guarantees to knock him out. Um, with a bit of HP investment that he can run from speed creeping, um, which I'm fully expecting. So this is absolutely key. Um, I reckon it's a good one to lead with, um, because I reckon his best lead is going to be that Tapu Coco. Uh, he may want to uh, U-turn straight out, which is fair enough, which means we can potentially get a Toxic Spike, which really puts in a lot of work against his team, and it forces in the Nida Queen as well, which gets hit by Super Effective Scald, or we can double out into the Mamo Swine and hit him even harder with a Earthquake or even a Tectonic Rage. We see the Rapid Spin as well, just gets rid of a Hazard should we need to. This team does not have much in the way of Hazard setting. I think it's Pinsir and Nida Queen and Bishar for his only Hazard setters. And the only one there which is any good at it really is the Nida Queen, which I'm expecting to be more offensive if he chooses to bring it, which I think he will. Lastly on the team we have the Magiena, which is a Sugarberry variant. I think it's exactly the same set as last time. Last time he got really, really lucky around it. Not only did I get uh, burnt by his Scold, enabling me to be 3 8 KO'd, we also got a minimum roll on this Slow King right at the end of the game, which enabled him to live. Uh, when ultimately we ended up fainting because of that when we would have actually claimed the last two kills. So, expecting it to put in similar work this time. If he is Nidder Queen, if we bring it in against the Nidder Queen or the Zygarde again, we set up a Trick Room. We're guaranteed to live any Earth Power, Earthquake, Thousand Arrows, Earthquake again, Lands Wrath, any sort of ground hit they want to go for. We set up a Trick Room and we do a lot of damage, specifically to the. We, uh, we kill the Zygarde with Ice Beam. Uh, and we do a lot of damage to the Nida Queen with Ice Beam as well, being modest max special attack or quiet max special attack. Uh, again, the only thing that can prove a problem to it is that Slow King, but we do a huge amount of damage to that thing in the electric terrain. I think we go cutting electric terrain, but uh, we do a lot of damage, like 72% in regular, just without any special. I think that's with a special attack boost actually. We guaranteed to occur without a special attack boost anyway, which is key because the only thing really stopping Mammoth Swine is the uh, slow thing. Uh, lastly, we have our Sweeper this week. And we have Wakanberry Minior Yellow. So this can live any hit from the Tapu Coco. Uh, I'm expecting it to be some sort of maybe Zap Plate, maybe Choice Banded. So we can live any hit from this. And we go for a Shell Smash. And then from there, we should just be able to sweep. We can potentially get a substitute up if we're expecting him to switch out, preserving the Tapu Coco, which I reckon he probably would. Um, which would help us against the Mega Pinsir, because he won't be able to hit us. Um, so yeah, we can obviously take a hit from the Mega Pinsir, he only does about 50% to us. Which will just nick us in, or other keep us just out of shields down, or nick us just into shields down. Um, which one allows us to get up a shell smash for free? Actually, no, no, no. Hang on a second. I should. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So we get a shell smash, and then we're able to knock him out on the following turn as he goes for a quick attack. So yeah, we've got the acrobatics and we've got the earthquake. It hits his whole team really, really hard. Obviously, aside from that slow king, which only takes neutral. But with the, uh, without an item, we're going to be able to do a solid amount of damage at plus two with the uh, acrobatics. Um, the only thing which I see... Actually, the only other thing I see foreseeing a problem is if he's a really physically bulky Zygarde, because that will be able to do something against us. And also he has Sucker Punch in the Bisharp, and he also has Quick Attack in the Mega Pinsir. He has Sucker Punch on the uh, Emboar. Oh, actually, he also gets Sucker Punch on the uh, Nida Queen, and also has potential Hail support as well. So. There's potential ways of wearing this down after we've set up, but I'm reckoning after we've got the Shell Smash, we're actually going to be in a fine position to actually uh, sweep, especially if it's late again. 
So, yeah, that is the plan. Please do let me know your thoughts on the team and uh, what you reckon the result's going to be. So let's move on to the game. Okay, so we are now in the battle with Alan. And as you can see, he's chosen to bring, or similar to me, very, very similar team to last time, replacing the Embor with the Holucha. So there's definitely a possibility for some Electric Seed Unburden shenanigans there. Uh, so as you can see, he's brought the Holucha, the Tapicoco, the Nither Queen, the Mega Pinsir, the Sloking, and the Serena. So it looks as though my like, Ambipom's use is limited. Uh, the Hidden Power Rock on the Pinsir could be very, very handy, and the Faker, of course, on the Tapicoco is going to be very, very big damage. But with regards to things like the Power Up Punch, uh, which is predominantly left for the Fish Up, um, that's now basically useless. Uh, we can get a little bit, or we can get an attack boost, uh, which could mean we threaten something. With our only coverage being ice, we really don't hit sloking, so that's a really good switch to us. Uh, Minior uh, has a very, very good shot at sweeping him late game, uh, if we can get the Tapu Coco to actually attack us. So that will be very helpful. Uh, something to definitely consider in going towards the late game. Uh, McGinner again. It's an outstanding matchup. Um, just need to weaken the slope, sloping a bit. Last time we managed to get a little bit lucky versus it. Uh, so fingers crossed we can get our revenge luck. Tentacruel. Um, it seems like a reasonable lead if he's going to have a Coco. Uh, but if he does, he'll probably end up U-turning or Volt Switching. And I don't really want him to Volt Switch on my Wakan Berry. So I want him to Wild Charge into it. Uh, Mandibuzz, literally there for the Mega Pin, so it's going to really helpful versus the Holucha as well. Foul player is going to do a lot of damage, assuming it's a max attack uh, with a bit of speed investment. Uh, Mamoswine again, very very strong, ground DMZ, hopefully we can catch that Sloking unaware. Uh, he does have a ground immunity this time in the Holucha, so if we do opt to uh, risk it, then Hopefully he does not predict it and switch into our or his whole lucha. Uh, so yeah, overall the matchup looks very very balanced. Uh, Mega Pincer is going to be a problem. Uh, Nido Queen I'm expected to be offensive. Last time defensively it didn't really do an awful lot. So offensive is really going to threaten my team. Uh, but I l it looks like McGinn can set up on basically anything. Uh, it doesn't really want to set up on Sloking. Um, but Sarina, Me Mega Pinsir, it, it really does not mind with its Shooker Berry. So uh, that's looking very hopeful towards the uh, latter part of the game. So let's dive straight into it. And you can see we are going to lead with our Ambipom, expecting him to leave with Tapu Coco. It gives us a free fake out turn one and a huge amount of damage on Tapu Coco. So that's, that's really good. Because if it's the same set as last time, uh, yes, it's got Roost. But it's really not going to want to uh, be taking these hits repeatedly. It's going to force him to switch out in the future. Um, so we're going to predict to go into this thing, and we can see it's actually bold, fully physically defensive, impish, fully physically defensive. Uh, that's obviously their last time it was Scarf to try and catch Mamoswine off. Uh, this time it's actually fully physically defensive for a similar reason. So we're going to go into his Mega Pinsir. Uh, we're not going to go for anything other than switching it into our Mandibuzz. Uh, I could have gone for Hidden Power Rock. It would have done very negligible damage to Tapu Koko anyway. Uh, so on the Mandibuzz, we're just going to switch into our Mamoswine. At the minute, we don't have anything to fear, and it does reveal that he is, in fact, a physical variant, quite probably the same as last time. So this Earthquake does a lot of damage. He should know he can live any hit. But he actually pulls a fantastic switch into his Molt Breaker or Lucha on my Grand DMZ. So that was a superb play by Alan. Uh, really, really did not expect him to do that. That was uh, that was actually a really, really fantastic play. Uh, I get a free switch into our Lucha, though. Get a little bit of Rocky Helmet Chip. Actually, he's a leftover set, uh, so he's a much bulkier variation, um, which is quite potentially a problem without an awful lot to break it. Uh, just gives us a free roost as he goes into his sloking, uh, which we're just going to taunt. I don't really know what he's going to go for. Uh, it seems like a fairly reasonable play, uh, but we're going to go for a foul, foul play, break his culprit berry, which he does have the same as last time. Uh, these ice beams aren't really doing an awful lot. Uh, when we roost the following turn, we're going to lose our flying typing, and uh, it's going to do really, really negligible damage. So his taunt wears off. Uh, we're going to be able to do about 30% with a foul play. Um, 
so that could be handy. Uh, just going to roost again. Uh, we actually do potentially live a hit from this uh, type of cocoa at this point. Uh, very good chance to live a hit. We're just going to sack off our ambipom. Uh, I'm not expecting it to do an awful lot of work now that he knows uh, the slow king is perfect switching. Uh, it means I can just go into my mammo swine here. Uh, just going to set up stealth rocks because stealth rocks are actually going to be very, very crucial towards the later parts of the game. Uh, and it's actually going to be a little bit of chip off on the pincer and stuff like that. So I'm going to go into my tentacruel and I'm actually going to set up a toxic spike here, which is really to bait out the Nido Queen. Because I'm going to I'm going to sack off, first of all, I'm going to sack off the uh, tentacruel here, hopefully get a poison. I don't. Not the end of the world. But we're going to go into our Magina here. And this gives us a free opportunity to go for a Ice Beam, because he's not going to want to stay in for a particular Thunderbolt. He's going to want to get rid of his Toxic Spikes, so we're going to get a huge amount of damage off on this Nido Queen. I actually drop it to 10%, uh, being Modest Max Special Attack. Now, this is a very, very rough turn for us. Uh, he actually goes for Earthquake and he gets a critical hit. Uh, that critical hit is very, very big. So what that crit does is, instead of doing about 46, 50 percent, he's actually done 77, uh, which means that I cannot really take a hit anymore, and I might as well finish play it to the end of the turn. Now I do predict him to go for an attack, uh, and I set up a trick room. So if the Nido Queen went for an earthquake and did not get a crit. It's the same turn of events, except I'm on about 25-26% more health. And that means that the Slow King does not beat me 1v1. It means that I essentially am going to claim at least one kill. Because something is going to have to be sacked off to the Magina. Uh, and then he'll have to go back into the... In fact, I'll probably claim at least two kills. Uh, so he goes into his Slow King here which can just scold here. It really does not care. And we just get to go for Thunderbolt here, which does a massive amount of damage, which is going to be really, really good for our Meteor later in the game. But that turn, because of the crit, instead of switching out there, I would have been able to stay in, which would have given me a kill, either on the Slow King, which he would not have given me. So it would have been either on, it would have probably been on the Sarina, uh, more than likely. Unless he's really, really wanting to deep uh, rapid spin later. But instead I've had to now stall out my own trick room. Because this thing is now a problem. So he's going to actually slack off as well, which is really annoying. Because <laughs> all that Thunderbolt damage I just did, uh, did to it is now redundant as well. So Alin's now in a really, really commanding position. Uh, so I'm going to switch into my Mammoth Swine on another Ice Beam. Um, he gets a crit. That's pretty much irrelevant. Um, just go for an Earthquake, get some really, really good chip up on this Mamo, uh, Slow King. He actually doesn't get a burn, uh, which gives us an opportunity to go for a nice crash or an Earthquake. Uh, I do actually go for an Earthquake. It's not a problem. Uh, Ice Shard is going to do a huge amount of damage. Uh, it should live, and it does. So we get a fairly reasonable roll. Um, yeah, the Bullucha lives, uh, which isn't the end of the world. Uh, we could have gone into Mandibuzz there. I don't really feel like it was worth it. Uh, so we're going to Mandibuzz now. Uh, he's actually reels the roost. Um, so this is getting harder and harder every single time. Uh, but he's going to go for the... I'm going to go for foul play. I'm going to get a crit. And I'm predicting it's a, a natural attack. I'm actually going to go for a roost here. Uh, really just getting a little bit of chip off of the rocky helmet. He's out of range of another one. Uh, just going to go for a high jump kick uh, as we go for another... We actually go for a taunt here, we don't know when we're roosting. So this Polucha this turn is guaranteed to die. He can't quite knock us out. Or he could if he got an absolute max roll. But as you see he does not. And Mandibuzz actually lives. And we're going to get a roost off. So he's going to go to his Tapu Koko. Uh, we can just sack our Ma uh, Magina. Magina is now useless. I mean it does out... It does outspeed Sloking, but that is not really that helpful. So we have to go into our Minial here, and Minial can win. We are Wakanberry, so if he just wild charges into us, we're going to live, and we can Shell Smash. But he actually goes into his Sloking as we Shell Smash. Uh, not being White Herb, 
uh, really, really shot us in the foot here. Uh, but however, however, he doubles into his Sarina, and this is where I realise something. I have got an odd number of HP on my Minior, which is really bad. If I had an even number of HP, I wait for I shell smash here, wait for him to break a substitute, and then I set up another substitute. So I'm behind a substitute, and I'm at plus four in oh sorry, pl ti three times attack, three times speed, three times special attack, and I have boosted acrobatics. Now I can't do that. I unfortunately I can shell smash again. That's fine. He's going to break our substitute with the truck kick. But even if I substitute again now, I'm not going to be at 50%. Uh, so I don't get my powerful form, as it were. Uh, we're just going to knock out the uh, Sarina, uh, which technically could be dead already. Uh, and unfortunately, without a critical hit, we can't knock out the Slow King. Actually, no. I think if we got a high roll there, or a max roll, we could have knocked it out. But that... Oh, no, there we are. I had to, uh, had to crit, so there we are. Uh, but anyway... Mandibuzz can still win this, weirdly enough. Uh, he's going to Ice Beam as we go for a Roost, uh, and we're just going to knock him out with Foul Play. Now, his Tapu Koko, I'm almost certain, is Zap Play. And the maximum damage for it, then, I think it's about a 40% chance for him to knock me out from this range. So, all Mandibuzz needs to do is live a hit and Roost. Because after a Roost, we are now then out of range of the Mega Pinsir, its frustration only does 50%. So we just need to keep roosting, we still have our Rocky Helmet. This Tapu Koko is guaranteed to die this turn, unless it clicks Roost. If it clicks Roost then GG. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. But yeah, our play is to click Roost, uh, but unfortunately we do get knocked out by this Wild Charge and it is good game to Alan. Uh, very close 1-0. He seems to have a way of, of just getting a little bit of luck versus my Magirna. But uh, very, again, it was a very hacksbury game. Uh, very, very, he, play, he had some excellent turns. He really, really did. And he, d he deserved to win. Yeah, that, that, that's it. He, he, he played very, very well. And uh, he, there was a few key turns in that, like the Grand DMZ on the whole Lucha, uh, where he did, he just outplayed me. So. Uh, Yep, very deserved winner, and unfortunately we are now 3-3, three and three. Uh, so getting to playoffs is now that little bit harder. Uh, gonna have to uh, essentially uh, win out, pretty much. Well, that's the, <laughs> that's the target anyway. We've got a couple of really difficult games coming up. Next week we have Rob Coach at Get Power Erect, who is uh, currently tied with me on the number of times we've won and lost against each other. So uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, and then the following week we're back battling Elliot again, who is currently undefeated uh, this season. Uh, after that, we have Jake, who is our biggest rival. Uh, week 10, we are playing Ryan, coach of the Los Angeles Latias, who I know is a very competent player. Uh, then week 11, we're against Ben again, who could always pull a trick out of his sleeve. And then week 12, our final week is against Barry, coach of the Scary Fluffy Thingies, who again, yeah, a bit like Ben, you can't really be sure what to expect. Uh, so this is still a, uh, a very uncertain season, which is uh, quite new. But um, definitely uh, definitely need to get the win next week against Rob. So well played, Alan, and I look forward to battling Rob next week. So uh, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you didn't, please do leave a dislike and some constructive criticism in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.